There are two kinds of heart attacks in cardiology. Number one is called a STEMI, or an ST elevation MI, myocardial infarction, ST elevation myocardial infarction. And the second one is called a non-STEMI, or non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. Both can be bad, but the worst one is usually the STEMI, the ST elevation MI. Now, the reason it's called ST elevation is because on the EKG, there's an area we call the ST segment. If that's elevated, that means the entire artery, the artery of your heart is completely blocked. It's completely plugged up. There's no more blood flow going to that artery. If it's your LAD or RCA, or whatever artery it is, there's no more blood flow to that artery at all. The fix for that is to open it up right away. In addition to that, optical med optimal medical therapy, which we'll talk about. The second type of heart attack, which is less, which is way more common, is something called the non-STEMI. This is the non-ST elevation line. This is where the artery is mostly open, but you've got a little blockage, you know, in part of it. It's not completely blocked, but there's just, you know, half of it or a third of it or, or whatever it might be is a little bit blocked. That's not as emergent, and you don't have to go to the cardiac cath lab and get opened up right away. With the STEMI type of heart attack, you have to go to the cath lab and get opened up right away or give him very strong blood thinners until you're transferred to a place that has a cath lab. So um, the important thing to know there's a difference. There's the massive heart attack, which we call STEMI usually, and it's, and it's, a, it's apparent on the EKG. There's the non-STEMI, which we do an EKG, and it looks fairly normal. How do you know if it, that it's a non-STEMI then if the EKG looks normal? That's a really good question. So the way you know is you we have a blood test now called troponin. The troponin blood test is elevated, and that's how we know you're having a heart attack. There's certain cutoffs. If it's a high sensitivity troponin, we usually cut off, you have a cutoff of about 100. In some places, it's 50, you know, below six is considered normal, but usually we don't get excited until it's in the 40s or 50s, and sometimes it's it's really a problem when it's over 100. Um, people with other conditions sometimes don't clear troponin, and that's why theirs is always slightly higher. So it still goes by your judgment a little bit, but the troponin test is very nice because it's very specific to the heart. With the ST elevation MI, the EKG shows these ST elevations. There's no question about it. The person is having a heart attack. They get very strong blood thinners if there's no nearby cath lab and they get transferred or they go straight to the cath lab and we open them up. Their troponin is going to be incredibly high. It's going to be in the two to 300 range or, or more, um, sometimes in the thousands on the high sensitivity troponin. If, the, if you're using the older type of troponin or the non-high sensitivity, you know, this is, these are in the, you know, 40, 50, 5, 10, 20 range. It just kind of depends. Um, so that's kind of where it stands. So then optical, optimal medical therapy for both groups. As soon as this person walks into your ER, whether it's a STEMI or a non-STEMI, you have to give them optimal medical therapy, which is aspirin 325, Berlinta or Plavix, some kind of loading dose, um, preferably Berlinta because it's not a pro-drug and it activates almost immediately within 20 minutes. You have 68% of your platelets completely blocked, whereas with Plavix, that could take up to four hours because it's a pro-drug. It needs to go to your liver to be activated. Um, the next is some kind of heparin or Lovenox. Um, usually we do heparin most of the time because it's convenient. You can shut it on and off, but you can use Lovenox and you can actually give Lovenox IV. There's a dose, 30 milligrams IV, then follow with the sub-Q. Um, it's a subcutaneous injection. Um, then if the patient's heart rate is elevated, um, you want to give them a beta blocker, uh, something like metoprolol, which will drop their heart rate without affecting anything else. Um, the number one way to reduce myocardial oxygen demand is to slow down the heart rate. If they're tacking away at 80 or 90 or 100, get their heart rate down to like 55 or 60, 65 at the most, the, the oxygen demand in the heart goes down. Um, so that's huge. Um, last but not least, um, on discharge, if their ejection fraction is below 40, you want to put them on an ACE inhibitor. Now the guidelines are pretty clear about that. If their EF is not below 40, they could technically get away with not being on it, especially if their blood pressure is already low to begin with. If they're you know barely at 78 or 8, 98 systolic, you don't want to put them on a you know 2.5 of enalapril or lisinopril. Um, so you want to hold off on that if their EF is normal. Now if they have hypertension anyways, ACE inhibitors are a great choice. The people on ACE inhibitors live longer regardless of anything else they've looked at. Obviously, people with lower blood pressure live longer almost regardless uh, of anything else. Now, if the patient is anemic, you probably want to give them blood unless they're chronically at that level. If they're normally uh, at a hemoglobin of 14 and they walk through your ER and their hemoglobin is 6, you have to give them blood. That's probably the cause of the non-STEMI. Now, if it's a STEMI, they still have to go to the cath lab and all that. You might want to be very careful with the blood thinners you use, though, because um, you could be they might be bleeding somewhere. Um, so you got to weigh the benefits and risks, obviously, 
um, in those scenarios. The other drug you definitely want to give is a really high dose aspirin, something like a torvastatin 80. Um, even in the acute phase, you say, well, no, shouldn't we just discharge them home on it? No. Mortality, when given a, a torvastatin 80 or Lipitor 80, is reduced within those first 14 days and then 30 days, um, like 22%, something really high like that. So you want to give that as well. Um, so that should be your combination of medications for both groups, the STEMI and the not STEMI. Now, if the, if the STEMI is not being cathed right away, you want to give them TPA or a very powerful blood thinner to get them to the other place that has the cath lab on the ambulance ride that you give them the TPA, put them on a heparin drip, and send them off to the cath lab where they can get opened up either that day or the next day. Um, but that's kind of how you treat the two, and that's the difference between the two. I hope you learned something.